Hi, I'm Jake Bruton, and today on the Build Show Network, I want to talk about uh, three different decks at our Hilltop Arrow project and the reasons behind all three of them. But most importantly, we're going to cover this little egress deck off the master. Let's do it now. Our starting point in this conversation is uh, the deck to wall connection. And in reality, that's kind of what we're going to talk about in the whole video. So let's start with our traditional wood frame deck uh, tied to the structure of the house. That's what we have out front. We have that as our uh, walk ramp up to the building. Uh, the reason that we have it tied to the house is because uh, it actually goes in and is captured by the house on one side. So we felt that it wasn't uh, wasn't possible for us to completely disconnect that from the structure the way we do the other two decks. Uh, so let's talk about that front deck. It's traditional wood frame. It is mounted to the zip sheathing. Uh, it has a small spacer behind it. It has a deck ledger spacer behind it. That spacer is mounted to the sheathing, not to the uh, siding. And then the uh, deck flashing comes from behind the siding out and over the deck. It's a traditional uh, assembly. The only thing that's out of the ordinary is that little void behind it. That little void is the same as the void behind our cladding. So we have a 3 8 space behind the siding behind me or behind anywhere on the house. And we have a 3 8 space behind that deck ledger. The reason for that space is that we want drying potential, both in the deck ledger and in the house. And anytime that we can in, uh, anytime that we can integrate a space for air to move and for uh, water to drain, that's the best case scenario for our assembly. That's why we preach constantly about uh, our siding being on a rain screen. So I think that if you're going to wood frame a deck, that's our number one. We have to have uh, a draining drying space between the rim and the house. That's a, a, that's a given. There are deck ledger spacer products that are available on the market. Uh, that are real easy to find and real easy to just keep a box of them on hand, which is what we do. Uh, but I think that that's a very important thing because we see constant problems with rot at that location. Anytime you have two things mushed together that can get wet, uh, you're going to have problems with those two things drying once they are already wet. So, number two, let's talk about the enormous balcony cantilever deck off the end. We've done some videos on it in the past. You've, I'm sure you've seen content from Steve Basic or from myself about it. Uh, that thing is a cantilever, so it doesn't have supports going down, meaning it does have to be fastened back to something solid. Well, if it were a deck, it could just be attached to the house and then have some posts out at the end. Since it's a cantilever, it has posts near the house, but not out at the end. It has to have... Uh, all of its support back at the house, but it also cantilevers far enough that it needed to be made out of metal. Well, if we're going to take a big long piece of metal and hang it out, I think the rule of thumb for code is uh, one out, three in. So if you're going to cantilever a foot, you need three feet back inside the building. Well, we can do something like that with steel. We could mount to those piers coming back. We could encapsulate that in our envelope. But then we would have a big piece of steel that hangs 10 feet out, gathering all that temperature from outside and then bringing it right in through the assembly because it has to continue inside of our assembly. That's a horrible idea from a uh, energy standpoint, from condensation standpoint, to have something that is metal and outside come inside Without some sort of thermal break, that's poor planning. That's a bad idea. So Steve designed uh, and worked with the engineer on this one. Everything is molted, mounted down to the foundation, to those two larger columns at the end of the house, and nothing is connected back to the house whatsoever. Russell built did a fantastic job. They did a, 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 a great job working with Steve and the engineer to get exactly what they wanted, exactly what the homeowners wanted. We have this great as Steve calls it, disseminating house as it gets further from this large mass behind me. And we have a connection that is a thermal break and a water break. Uh, and we were able to basically finish our envelope and then just set that thing on the outside, which is what we're gonna talk about here. So this deck, this little egress set of steps, uh, we're only a couple, uh, couple feet off the ground. This is technically a window, uh, but this is the master and this window is big enough for egress. And so we went ahead and had uh, Russell built construct us another um, 
little landing and some steps so that if in an emergency you wouldn't have to jump out the window, you could walk down. The interesting thing is what we're talking about everywhere here. There are two little concrete pads underneath this deck and this deck is not mounted to the house. So I can completely swipe my hand through there. This wall is finish clad, finish waterproof, finish air seal, everything. And then we're basically just parking something next to it. Now we've done this a couple times with new construction decks, uh, either a balcony deck or a deck with stairs where we've put a little stub in the concrete and then set the, set the new deck on it. And it has, it does add a couple posts. It does add a little bit of uh, complication to our concrete work, but it makes that air barrier and that water seal completely separate. Uh, the house is able to be watertight, no different than it is say right here behind that deck. And then we don't have that major weak point. Uh, the only thing that we've ran into is it takes a little bit of convincing to make that pricing commitment to space things off the wall. They really had the client really needs to be informed and care about durability. Uh, but in our opinion, this is a fantastic way to do it. Now, I have had a couple times where clients were like, yeah, but you're going to make that freestanding. And what always comes to my mind is, yeah, the house is freestanding too. It's foundation with wood on top of it. And that's all we're talking about for a wood frame deck. Yes, it does add a little bit more framing. It does add a little bit more concrete work potentially, but the upswing here is that we're building a self-supporting thing that doesn't damage our air or water barrier, our WRB with the house. We don't have complicated flashing details that we have to deal with. And when, whenever they hire some other uh, carpenter to come and replace the floor on it in a few years, we don't have to worry about them getting that flashing detail correct and then, or, or incorrect and then ruining something that we did on the house. It's all these little things that add up to a home with greater durability. I realize that all these things add costs. I realize that they're not going to be for everyone. And we understand that what we're trying to do is we're trying to do the best job we can with every budget that we're giving uh, and every scope of work that we're given. And then that way we can continue to help the industry move forward, continue to build houses that our grandkids will be able to see, continue to build houses that our clients will be happy to own and happy to maintain. And as silly as it sounds, a little deck that's not attached to the house is one of those ways that we're adding durability. I'm Jake Bruton. Thanks for watching today on the Build Show Network. Don't forget to check out the Unbuild It podcast. That's a podcast that uh, Steve Basic, another contributor here on the Build Show Network, and uh, our good friend Peter Yost. Peter is a uh, building science professor at uh, Yale, and he's a building science consultant. And those two go way back for the, uh, the origins of Building Science Corporation. So uh, those two are a wealth of knowledge, and I'm happy to get to do that with them. Also, make sure that you're subscribed to the newsletter for the Build Show Network. I know that some of you find this through uh, our IG accounts or through YouTube, but if you sign up through the newsletter through the website, you get a couple emails every week letting you know all of the fantastic content that everybody's putting out. It's really worth the watch. It's really worth the subscription. And that little email makes me even, and I'm a contributor, go, oh yeah, I should go look at those videos real quick. So thanks for watching today on the Build Show. Consider your assemblies. Have a good day.